Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about the science fiction Dragon's Egg by Robert L. Forward. <clears throat> okay. Men could never live on such a star. Only by the most advanced technology can humans exist in synchronous orbit to observe it. The surface gravity is an incredible 67 billion times that of Earth, with matter so compressed that the mass of a normal star is packed into a crusted sphere only 20 kilometers in diameter. A magnetic field 2 trillion times that of Earth distorts the nuclei in the crust, and our normal chemical reactions are replaced by neutron reactions. Yet, on that impossible world, men detect intelligent life. The Chila, who live so fast that one of our hours is the equivalent to them of more than a hundred years of human life. And we follow those Chila as they struggle from savagery through the beginnings of agriculture to the discovery of science in a moving story of sacrifice and triumph we see them establish contact with the humans orbiting above them and, for a time, men are their teachers for a brief time. Okay, first, you know, this, this whole thing is basically in, divided into four parts. First, you know, um, it, Pulsar, which is basically the events leading up to the mission of the Dragon, of the Dragon Slayer which is the name of the ship that the humans were living on. And um, then there's Volcano, which is the Chila and the beginnings of their agriculture and learning to hunt. And <clears throat> then, of, and then there's like this catastrophe. There's a famine. And they have to get on to an ex they have to go do an exodus from the normal land they know to a completely new area and they're guided there of course when they see the, our ship the dragon slayer and it guides them to this new land which leads to part three god which is you know where they think they're gods and Eventually, um, we establish contact with them and leads into part four interactions. And, you know, you get it. You get the idea. And um, throughout this whole time, there's um, plenty of very, really interesting characters as far on the Chila side. I'd say the most. Um, it's the most um, influential. The three most influential and most interesting that you're probably going to remember would be Great Crack, then uh, Pink Eyes, and Swift Killer. <clears throat> you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to try and spoil their stories, although I'll say that uh, I thought that uh, Pink Eyes was a pretty sad one, and um, I just think it's kind of interesting how how much um, it their Sheila history not exactly parallels, but kind of in matter of speed because you'll notice that um, the the mission is basically over a week, and you know and but the majority of the book actually takes place over the course of like a a day, you know, during interaction. They're like the a large portion of God and the um, interaction takes place over the course of just one day, two. At, well, technically two, because that's when they send a ship up. But um, then when you look at our history and you notice, you know, our cult, our you know technological abilities also kind of going up over time and increasing. You know, like um. First, there was the agricultural revolution, you know, several thousands of years ago, then leading up to the Bronze Age and how long the Bronze Age lasted, till the Middle Ages, and um, 
certainly do, does seem like technology is getting faster and faster, kind of like in here as well. And, um, you know, like, there's just so many interesting characters and, you know, the, um, there's such an interesting world and, um, that I don't really want to spoil anything, you know, beyond what I just said, but, um, oh, and, um, in addition to all of this stuff here, there's also a technical, in a technical appendix at the end where they have, uh, you know, maps, a timetable, and, you know, descriptions of the Chila, and the, and, uh, some cross-sections of the Dragon Slayer, and, um, and I don't know about any of you, but I always love it when books do stuff like this, you know, they're not just trying to tell a story, they are trying to, you know, make a world, you know, and I always prefer, the, and I always love these even more so than um, most regular just telling the story kind of books. You know, um, it's kind of part, it's one of the reasons why I liked Saga of the Seven Suns so much, even though from what I've read in the comments, not ever, it seems like nobody agrees, but, you know, but yeah, and, um, you know, just like whenever I read like a book like a fantasy or whatever or sci-fi, I'm always like interested in new stuff. But um, yeah, but no. Anyway, back to the book. Um, my personal rating for this would have been five out of five, even without the technical appendix attached to it. But with it, definitely loved it. Would definitely recommend it. Go out, buy it, check it out, read it. Really good. You'll love it. Yeah. Anyway, um, <clears throat> till next time. I'm sure you can all guess what my next episode is going to be by looking at the title or just what I've been, you know, said in another video. But yeah, anyway, um, till next time. See you later, and have a nice day.